Hello, everyone. This is Feng and Zhou from Beijing. Very glad to be joining this open source summit hosted by the Linux Foundation. Today, we're going to tell you about the topic under the hood with Fluent Bit Operator, which is a Kubernetes native log processor. Yeah, my name is Feng and Zhou, and I am CNCF ambassador and Kubesphere community manager. And I'm also one of the contributors and a member of Fluent community. Hi, I'm Dhruv. I'm a software engineer with the Marketplace team at DigitalOcean. I'm also a member of the Fluent team and a contributor to the Fluent Bit Operator. Okay, thanks, Drew. Uh, in this session, we're going to walk you through the challenges of logging in Kubernetes. And next, we're going to introduce what is Fluent Bit and the challenges with Fluent Bit. And, uh, Next, we're gonna tell you why we create the Fluent Based Operator, and we're gonna uh, introduce more about its architecture and workflow. And uh, as a final, we're gonna introduce more about their use cases. You know, the Fluent Based Operator in DigitalOcean APP platform and the Kubesphere logging system. I think uh, you guys may know the Game of Thrones. This is uh, the screenshot from the Game of Thrones. And uh, you know, the White Walkers tell us that we have a lot of challenges of logging in Kubernetes. You know, we have multiple and different data, data sources. We have different data formats. And the White Walkers King said that we need lightweight security and resilience. And we also get the challenges of we have multiple outputs and destinations. Okay, let's see what uh, the details about the challenges. You know, we have uh, different logs from multiple places. You know, we have bell metals or VMs, or we have the embedded devices and edge devices, uh, especially in the distributed environments, you know, the Kubernetes environment, we have containers or ports, or even in the networking environment, we have the TCP or UDP logs. We, we are also facing the different data formats, you know, the JSON, Apache, Nginx logs, Docker, and CRI. Uh, in some typical scenarios, we want to ship the logs from point A to point B, so we might get the challenges of the different outputs and destinations. So typically we have, we have uh, multiple output plugins in Flumbit operator, you know, the Elasticsearch, Loggy, Splunk, MongoDB, and S3. Yeah, our clients also told that we need to collect and process the logs in a high performance and efficient way. You know, in the uh, multi-tenancy environment, we still need to handle the data security and the reliability. So those challenges are difficult to deal. You guys may, may know how to debug your workloads or containers in Kubernetes. Yeah, you can try to get the Kubernetes logs from this command. Yeah, kubectl logs, pod and containers. Yeah, this is a native method that we used to retrieve the logs in the Kubernetes ecosystem. So, you know, the cloud providers also uh, provide a lot of logging solutions. Maybe you are using the stack, stack drivers or the CloudWatch provided by AWS, yeah. You know, the ISVs also provide a lot of logging solutions, you know, the Splunk, some logic, Datalog, and so on. Yeah, we still have some open source choices you know, the EFK stack or Loki. Yeah, there are a, lot, a bunch of choices you can choose if you want to debug and retrieve the logs from your Kubernetes ecosystem. Yeah, I also list a table of their solutions and uh, give the, their pros and cons. Okay, for the stack driver and CloudWatch, maybe they are easy to use and low maintenance efforts but they have, you know, the uh, vendor locking, or it has high low, high cost for 
their solutions. As for the SV solutions, you know, this Splunk, Sumologic, or Datalog, Datadog, sorry, uh, they are also easy to use and uh, you will still facing the same challenges when you use them uh, for your environment. Okay, you know, the EFK is the standard, we say the uh, defector logging solutions in some of the enterprises, you know, th they are most uh, popular logging solutions and they are very mature, but they require uh, the higher so resource consumption in some scenarios. So if you want to retrieve the logs in the edge devices or the embedded or even the, uh, you know, the K3S clusters, EFK maybe is a little bit, uh, you know, the high uh, resource usage. Okay, you know, the logging is a promising uh, logging solution in the cloud native ecosystem, but it has changed its license uh, a couple of months ago. In this session, we're gonna deep dive into the Fluentbit and Fluentbit operator. So Fluentbit is a lightweight and high performance log processor. So you can use Fluentbit to process, forward and uh, distribute logs to different places. So I think Fluentbit is a Swiss knife for logging processing. This project was founded in uh, 2015, created by Treasure Data. Now it is a CNCF sub-project under the umbrella of friendly ecosystem. Due to this project written in C language, so it is very lightweight and zero dependencies. It has around uh, 70 plugins available. So, you know, the input, filter, buff, uh, the output, and the router plugins in its ecosystem. So you can also write your own uh, plugins in the Fluentbit ecosystem. So you know Fluentbit has only uh, 640 KBs. So this is very low CPU and memory usage. This is the general workflow for the Fluentbit in Kubernetes ecosystem. So you can use Fluentbit to to ship the uh, logs from Kubernetes pods to the destinations, you know, the Kafka, Elasticsearch, and MongoDB. Yeah. This is the general logging pipeline with Fluentbit and their plugins ecosystem. Generally speaking, we have uh, the workflow from input to the routing, uh, work, uh, routing and they will route the logs from uh, filter plugins to the different outputs. So uh, this is the popular plugins in the Fluentbit ecosystem. So as for the in input plugin, which is used to gather information from different data sources. Uh, for the parser plugin, which is used to convert the unstructured data to structured data. Yeah, as for the filter plugin, which you use to match, exclude, and enrich logs with some specific metadata. So it has the grep, Lua, modify, and Kubernetes filter plugins. So you can leverage them to filter out and enrich your logs in this logging pipeline. Okay, if you want to ship your logs from different sources to the different destinations. So we can use output plugins, you know, the uh, file forward, Kafka, Logi, and Elasticsearch. Yeah, it has, it still have more plugins in the output. So you can choose or you can custom your own plugins if you want. Yeah, uh, you will find Fluentbit is not a silver bullet if you, if you have been using Fluentbit for a long time, since you may facing the challenges of Fluentbit, uh, you know, they have some typical issues, which is described there. 
you know, the restart mechanism. You know, Flumbit uh, has not been support the dynamic restart gracefully. So if you want to modify the configuration about Flumbit, you have to uh, edit their demo set and you need to reload and restart the Flumbit itself. So this is not convenient for folks if you want to uh, modify your logging workflow. So you have find that there are some typical issues in the Flumbit repository. Yeah. And uh, you will find the time was, you know, the three years ago. So uh, this is why we create the Flumbit operator, which is used to facilitate the management of Flumbit. The core functionalities of Flumbit operator brings to the Flumbit ecosystem uh, we can say, uh, you know, the Flumbit lifecycle management, it will help you to deploy and destroy Flumbit automatically. And it also provides the custom cust configuration. You can select different plugins, you know, the input, filter, and output plugins while the labels in Kubernetes. You know, the most uh, typical feature that provided by the Flumbit operator it helps you to handle with the dynamic reloading. So you, you can update the Flumbit configuration without rebooting the Flumbit pods itself. So we can say Flumbit operator helps us to facilitate the deployment of Flumbit and it provides great flexibility in building a login layer. So in DigitalOcean and KubeSphere team, we use the Flumbit operator to deploy and manage our uh, logging system and to retrieve the logs from different resources. I think Drew will help you guys to deep dive into the operator pattern and the front bait operators architecture and their design. Thanks. So before we actually dive deeper into the uh, fluent bit operator workflow and architecture, I wanted to uh, take two minutes to address what is an operator? What is a Kubernetes operator? A Kubernetes operator is a method of packaging, deploying, and managing a Kubernetes application. It essentially can be broken down into two parts, CRDs and the controller. CRDs stand for custom resource definitions. Custom resource definitions are a way to extend the Kubernetes API with their own set of APIs. So. For example, by default, um, uh, the Kubernetes API can be work, uh, works against pods, deployments, uh, services, etc. But through CRDs, you can extend it towards your own application. The second part is the controller. The controller takes care of three things, and the first part it does is watches for changes in application state. So if there's an application state which you're interested in, it keeps watching it and keeps tabs on it, essentially. <laughs> it then looks for differences between the desired state and what the actual state of the application is. And if there is a difference, it acts upon it and makes sure it reconciles and uh, the actual state is equal into the desired state. Uh, so yeah, the next question is like, why do we need an operator? Uh, why can't Kubernetes handle this by itself? So Kubernetes could actually handle it by handle uh, and manage applications by itself if they were stateless. Uh, stateless applications such as web apps, mobile uh, mobile backends, API services, any application with which doesn't require any additional knowledge about how you should be running these uh, applications. But when it comes to stateful applications, for example, a MySQL instance or monitoring systems or databases, it requires additional domain specific knowledge uh, that Kubernetes doesn't have because every, uh, let's say, instance of MySQL has its own identity. Uh, it needs the knowledge uh, in order to scale, upgrade, and reconfigure these applications. 
Kubernetes operators essentially encode the specific domain knowledge into Kubernetes extensions so that it can manage and automate an application's life cycle. Kubebuilder is a set of tooling and opinions which helps you scaffold your operator and helps you translate uh, your Go code into your CRD file. Controller runtime is a, is a part of the controller aspect of the cube builder, which helps you build um, anything to do with the controller, for example, watching and reconciling. So Fluent Mid Operator uh, defines six CRDs. Um, the first one is the Fluent Bit. Uh, daemon set and config. This fluent bit config CRD uh, essentially just selects the input filter output plugin and generates the final config into a secret. And the input parser filter output CRDs uh, defines the respective config sections. So each input filter output represents a config section which are selected by the fluid bit config via label selectors. The operator then watches these objects and constructs the final config and stores it as a secret. The secret is then mounted on to the fluent bit daemon set. To enable fluent bit to pick up uh, these updated secrets and making sure that those changes are, are, are you know, reflected in Fluent Bit. We have created a wrapper called the Fluent Bit Watcher, uh, which essentially looks for changes. And if there are any changes, it restarts Fluent Bit. We use Fluent Bit Operator at DigitalOcean and for the uh, for the DigitalOcean app platform. DigitalOcean app platform is a fully managed platform as a service that lets customers build, deploy, manage, and scale all kinds of different apps. The Fluent Bit operator in the app platform is used to solve the problem of logging and displaying logs to the end user. One of the main challenges when the context is the pass is aggregating and forwarding logs reliably in a dynamic environment uh, with hundreds of nodes, thousands on uh, thousands of workloads. Um, it is absolutely essential to make sure that all of these things are happening. All the logs are being delivered in real time and reliably to our end users. So how do we use Fluent Bit Operator in the DigitalOcean app platform? So we have our customer workloads running on Docs, which is the managed Kubernetes service by DigitalOcean, mm -hmm. and uh, they are continuously generating logs. So we use the Fluent Bit operator to make sure that uh, Fluent Bit is uh, capturing the latest logs as soon as there are any changes that happen. We make use of the Go client, which the operator provides, to uh, filter out and parse the logs, which are essential and are in a structured manner so that we can actually return it back to our end users. Yeah, thanks for Drew's introduction to the use case of Fluent Bait Operator in DigitalOcean app platform. Yeah, actually we see DigitalOcean team has made a lot of uh, great contributions to Fluent Bait Operator, you know, they have uh, add some great features and enhancement at Fluent Bit Operator, and to, and also they brings more plugins into the plugin system of Fluent Bit Operator. Yeah. So for the next, I would like to introduce how we build QC logging system with Fluent Bit Operator. Yeah, this is the built-in uh, logging system in Kubesphere. Kubesphere is an open source container platform built on Kubernetes. If we say Kubernetes is the Linux kernel, so Kubesphere is similar to the Ubuntu, a user desktop 
for the operating system, but Kubeswitch is designed for the distributed operating system, you know, the data center. So we can use Kubesphere to deploy and manage your cloud native applications and to build the cloud native observability on Kubernetes. So Kubesphere locking system integrate FluentBit operator to deploy and manage the lifecycle of FluentBit. So as you can see the general architecture of FluentBit, the locking system in Kubesphere. So we have the FluentBit operator, which is used to, to set up the FluentBit demo set on each Kubernetes node. So you can also leverage the, uh, the output plugins to send the data and metrics to different destinations, you know, the Kafka, Elasticsearch, or even FluentD. Okay, so we run the FluentBit on each node instead of FluentD. We provide a centralized log query, which is used to search and to retrieve the uh, users and the infrastructure's logs in a unified platform. We build this, uh, the Kubernetes native way. You can search the logs by namespaces, workloads, and pods. So if you want to uh, leverage this platform in a multi-tenant environment. So imagine you have different tenants in this platform. So you will need, you will require the users can only view their logs under their own users namespace or workspace. So, and next let's jump into the demo of QC locking system. All right, as we mentioned before, Kubeswitch locking system integrates the FluentBit operator as the underlying locking solution. So we are going to showcase a live demo to deploy the FluentBit operator into Kubernetes, use Kubeswitch console. Okay, let's jump into the live demo. So as we can see that we have a sample YAML which is used to deploy the FluentBit with Dumi as input and the standout as output. So if we successfully set up this demo, you will observe the message from the front bit port. Yeah, you will get the logs like these lines. Okay, we can have a quick look at this quick start YAML. So we have defined the tag with the dummy in the input and output section. So we just need to copy it and paste it to the, to our uh, web cuttle. Yeah. As we have already created this uh, YAML file locally, so we just need to uh, apply it. Okay, it may take a couple of seconds to create it, to create this, resources. So I will cut the waiting time until the resources being created. This is very strange that it takes around uh, more than 10 seconds to create those resources. Since we have already set up the FluentBit and FluentBit operator in my environment, yeah, we can We can get logging system. Okay, so now we have successfully created the demo uh, manifests in Kubernetes. So we can retrieve the logs from the FluentBit port. So we can use the centralized logging console to retrieve the uh, logs from the FluentBit part. So as we can see that uh, we can type the project name, yeah. Logging system. Yeah, for now we have seen the output from 
this front bit part, yeah. Let's drill into it and to find the standout container locks from this panel. So for now, we have seen the same result with this quick start. Yeah, that means uh, the front bit operator works properly. And we have seen the Dumi logs was output. So if we want to get more metrics and events from this container, we can drill into its detail page to see what happens into this container. Yeah. Okay, this is all for my demo. So uh, we've added some more uh, resources for you to check out if you want to dive deep into the world of operators. And uh, I hope you find them useful. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. If you want to learn more and ask anything about Flumbit and Flumbit operator, find us on Twitter. So we have uh, personal Twitter accounts. So feel free to ask us anything. Okay, thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.